Hi guys, it is Snapshot of a Soul, and let me take my headphones off. I am on my vlogging channel, Nicotine Beige, which is named after the color of my fridge. Nicotine Beige. Okay, um, first off, this is going to be a rather long semi-vlog, seeing as the video is not going to be an actual video of me talking because I can't really be bothered to turn on my camera because I just can't. So I'm recording this on a microphone and I might include some different pictures for you to look at. Okay, so first off, priorities. Right now, top priority for me is attempting to edit It's My Life 2.08. I'm not very happy with it. Um, it didn't turn out the way I wanted it to. My game... <sighs> I stuck it on my external hard drive because it wasn't working for me at all and I just I got really fed up with it. It was taking up too much space. I didn't need it. So I took my hundreds game, which was on my external at the time too, and I made that my main game. If you guys don't know what I'm talking about, I have any game starter and it's a thing by Numenor on Mod The Sims. And what it is, is it lets you have multiple game configurations, like multiple installations of the same game, but it doesn't take up a lot of space. And it's really good if you want to have like a no-cc game, or a medieval game, or a futuristic game, or something like, even just testing games, if, if you make mods and you test them, it's really nice to have. So I made The Hundreds my main game, and that's working out relatively well. It crashes a lot still when I have big crowds, and I know a lot of people complained about how in the background of the first two episodes there were not a lot of extras. Um, just so you know, that was because my game crashes a lot if I have a lot of people on the lot. I've tried to work around this by freezing the sims in the background. Um, I have a thing, it's called the freezer clock, and what it is, is it works with apartment life, where in apartment life, when you had magic, one of the spells was to freeze time or freeze a certain stem and stuff like that. And it was made into a hacked object where you can do it on demand forever if you want to. That's how I don't do set hour all the time. I just use the freezer clock. Um, so yeah, back on track. Uh, I freeze them. That seems to work a bit. Uh, my game still crashes on a lot of the bigger lots. Like, when I was doing in number two, I was doing the bar scene. That is on a lot. Like, it's not supposed to be in the series. Like, it's supposed to be two separate things. But Leanne in Dina's house is part of a fourplex. And beside the fourplex is, like, a really unused field. People use it for, like, basketball and soccer and football and stuff like that on good days. Or to just party and do it. And um, she lives in a fourplex, which is four houses, or it's one big house, it's like a duplex, but there's two houses on the top floor and two houses on the bottom floor. Okay, um, a lot of you won't know that term. You might call it like a multi-family dwelling or an apartment building. It's not an apartment building, it's completely different. Um, she lives there, and then there's like a parking lot place, and then there's a gym, and then there's the vineyard, which is the bar. And then there's another place, and it's like, it's a closed up shop that's going to open in later episodes, if I want to. Um, I have an idea for what I'm going to do with that. It's going to be like a new business opening up and stuff, and it's right beside Sunrise High, which is where it's at. I know I made a mistake in the hundreds, <laughs> where the characters kept saying Sunset High. It's because that was the original name of the school in the series was Sunset High, but I changed it to Sunrise because I didn't want it to sound like I was trying to imitate the Sims thing. So if anybody says Sunset, I'm just going to pretend that they were mistaken. The other school in the series is going to be West Forester, and West Forester is like a bad school. It was featured in my video Paradigms. It was one of my thousand subs videos. And yeah, it's going to be part, like, some of the characters that you see are going to be actual, like, actually in the hundreds. That's what I'm voice auditioning for. So if you go back and watch Paradigms, you'll notice that these characters do have a past, and this 
video was set like before the hundreds. Not a lot of people got that. And it's like, if you look closely, you can see a glimpse of Shade, you can see a glimpse of Leanne. And this was like way back when. And the reason I put Shade in there is because people didn't really catch the play on this, but Shade's mother just won a Mac in court. And I was going to explain this in later episodes, I decided not to, and then I was like yes, and I was like no. I don't know yet, as of yet, if I'm going to include that in the plot. Um, I'm leaning towards yes right now, but I wouldn't know where to put it in, honestly. I would have to wait a couple episodes to see how the plot forms on its own. I have it written out in shorthand and also in my head in a bit more depth, but honestly I don't have everything scripted. I'm about a quarter or a third of the way through the Under's Four script, so if you're a voice actor and you're listening to this, please, please, please don't be like, oh she's gonna take forever with the script, I'm just going to leave for five months to tie on or something. Seriously, like, just don't do that. If I set a due date, I'm going to set a due date, and those due dates are going to be like three weeks in advance. Um, that's more than ready notice. Most voice actors are given like three days notice. I know that I quit a lot of voice jobs because I don't have time to do them, but three weeks, yeah. Um, I had a few voice actors turn on lines late. I had to switch a couple people around. Uh, not so much for this episode as for episode two, where I had to switch up a couple of the voice actors. But yeah, like some some of my voice actors, they just go AWOL for like two months and don't contact me at all. So if you're one of those voice actors who knows that they're busy, please give me like a little bit of your schedule or something so I know. As for the hundreds, <laughs> back to my point. I get distracted a lot in my speech. It's called jumping around. I do it a lot. Sorry. Um, to rewind. I never really included what Shade's mother, like, she just wanted Mac in court. Because he was living in Scotland and Wales and Germany for most of his childhood because his aunt, like, he went and he lived with his aunt for a very long time because she got custody. And she used to live in Canada. The Hundreds is set in Canada, by the way. She used to live in Canada, then she moved to Scotland, then she moved to Wales, then she moved to Germany, and he came back. And that's why he has a different accent than his mother in the series is because he literally grew up in Europe and the actual voice actor is I think he's from Germany or something but he has a really he has a mix of accents because he's lived all over Europe which is very nice um point two a lot of you have been asking about the Technicolor phase which it was Jane's series and I feel like I haven't really done it justice in the next generation of it. Um, the game, it did crash a lot on some of the lots. I do have a lot of it filmed. I lost the files, I found them, I lost the files, I found them. Um, at this point, I'm not sure if I want to continue it. I, I would just rather let that be for now. It's a rather hard topic for me to discuss, but I'm discussing it now. Um, if you inquire about the technical phase, I'm probably just going to blow you off because I have a lot of stuff on the go in the technical phase. It's just, for me to film it and for me to edit it is one thing. For me to actually deal with the fact that this was a series of my childhood friend from Neopets when I was eight years old and now she's gone and she can't continue it and I've been left to do it is another thing. And it's hit me kind of hard since January. It has. And I've been dealing with it. There's a lot of things I've had to deal with, actually, even just recently. And, yeah. It's been hard, but... I... I'm not optimistic about this series at all. And a lot of you would see that as me giving up on something I promised to do. And I'm not giving up on it. Um, I will, f I will film it and edit it in my own time. And I want to leave that at that. Um... Next subject, Melissa J. 2004, which was my original account. There has been a lot of controversy over this account. A lot of people have been saying that I didn't sign up in 2005. I'd like to let you know that yes, I did. I did sign up in 2005. In 2005, 
I was in grade five, late, late, late grade five, uh, going on to grade six. And YouTube had just opened up to Canada at the time, or at least that was when I first heard of it, I can't remember which. And I signed up. Uh, my original account isn't around anymore, like my original, original account. I never used it for anything. It was like MJ2004-3. It's not around anymore. You can look it up. It's not because YouTube then discontinued the use of underscores in its usernames. Like, right after the beta. So, yeah. So, I got Melissa 2004. I didn't start making, like, serious machinima until I was in around grade 7. Um, I usually just, like, made stuff for friends. I had a prized music video which won honors and stuff. It was... It was Tolo by Floor Rider. <laughs> I know, I'm a dork. But, um, it was a cool song back then. And I had, like, over 200 sims in that video doing a coordinated dance with this new dance hack that just came out and it was so cool. Anyways, that was, like, my first big video. And I had a couple series. Um, I'm not going to mention, like, names or anything in this little part, but the series Is My Life was not originally called Is My Life. It was called My Life, and then in brackets, As a Freshman Nobody. Um, then just after I started out and I started getting a little bit of fame, somebody came out with a series called, you guessed it, My Life. I actually, I don't know her username. Like, I've heard of the series, I've watched some of it, I can honestly say, like, I'm going to be perfectly honest here because it is a vlogging channel, I didn't like it. Um, I believe that it wasn't in ill harm that the user took the name of my series and made me switch it, but yeah, my life, <laughs> that was, that's what it was supposed to be called. Um, then I changed it because I was riding along one day in a car and a song came on the radio and it was Bon Jovi's It's My Life. I think I was listening to like Sea Fox or something and a Bon Jovi song came on and I was like, oh, well, this would be a good title for a series. So I renamed it. I did it. I did, th I think it was like two or three or four iterations of the series before I finally got comfortable with it and I started gaining fame. I got a lot of subscribers. I got very close to 21,000. Um, I was forced to make my account unlisted around the time that I got like 18,000. This was back when YouTube was completely different and a lot of you who are like 10 or 12 won't remember this unless you signed up for YouTube when you were 5. Or so. I'm not, but I'm not like good at math. I'm bad. So. Yeah, I, I don't know how old you would have been when this happened, but um. YouTube used to be like, you get subscribers, like you get 300 subscribers in an hour. That's how fast it was growing back then. I got really popular on that site, and then this girl I knew, she went and she was jealous because I was friends with this guy that she really liked, and she went into my account. She went into my Mod Sims account first and claimed that she was me, started trolling their forums. I got banned. She used like my Facebook posts. She used my pictures. She used everything and made up this really garbled story that made no sense and it was just, it was really terrible. All I could really do was watch. I wasn't going to say anything because she knew everybody who was anybody and she had connections. Like she was the most, well we don't have popularity in our schools here. There's no like contest or anything. There's no cliques or anything. but. She was, if you were to put in those terms, very, very, very well connected. And she went into my account. She, there used to be, I don't believe there is anymore, there used to be a delete friends and like delete subscribers stuff. Like when you view your subscribers, there would be a little delete button where you could delete individual subscribers. Or you could delete a row where you could delete a page and stuff like that. Like, I don't know why they had this. I think it was for people who were closing their accounts or something, so they wouldn't corrupt the system. I honestly, I don't know, but I went and I could just sit there and she talked to me on MSN and she's like, okay, go on your YouTube, I have something for you to see and I just kept refreshing the page. 
and the subscribers kept going down and I was like what's going on and she didn't really say anything to me and she deleted all my friends, she deleted my subscribers, she deleted my videos and then with the final blow she deleted my account. That was in late February 2010 um, or early March. I don't really remember the exact date. Um, I was pretty devastated. That was like my life's work so far down the drain. I didn't really do anything for about a week. And then after a week, I decided to like basically suck it up. I made snapshot of a soul. I had my alternate account still called My Life My Productions, which was with my best friend Alex. And she and I just made this really stupid low CC series. Uh, you can go check it out if you want. There's a couple other videos on there that I just posted randomly and crap Alex posted and stuff. Um, so yeah, that's what happened with Melissa J2004. And um, then back, YouTube had this thing back when the account, like getting your account back wasn't possible after it was closed for a very long time. Then TestTube, which is like YouTube's testing facility, came out with this thing. It was called the YouTube whatever, it was like a restore program or something, and it was in the beta stage. And my friend, Daniel, showed me, and he has been a very good friend to me. And I was helping him build his online game at the time. I don't think I am anymore. I'm not sure. Um, I, I don't even know the state of that website. I haven't been on it in months because I completely forgot about it. Sorry, Daniel. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I got, I got my account restored. It took a relatively long time. It took, like, I, I don't even remember. It was over two weeks. And I got it back. And the only, like, they use this thing. And I think it's called a Wayback Machine. And it's where you go. And you can type in any website from, like, 96 to 2011 that's down or you want to see a previous version of the website or something and you can pick whichever day you want and it like scans the popular websites like youtube every day um and they use that they use a bunch of other stuff and they were just testing out stuff it was a really really small beta i was one of the first accounts to be restored it was very unstable at the time a lot of things screwed up um like so there were some random dates inserted from the like the backup because my backup was not from 2005, very obviously. It was not from 2010, very obviously. It was pretty much another gong show. Uh, I managed to upload two videos to the account. They said it wasn't a good idea. I managed to upload two videos. A bunch of others that I tried to upload failed. So I can't really do anything about that. The account is pretty borked. Um, I was planning to use it for something. Um, but I'm not sure what anymore, honestly. Like, it just, it feels like I should just reclose it. But I know if I do, then I would have no chance of getting it back again. And I want, like, I still have my old playlists available, but there's no videos. If I click on them, then Chrome freezes. I still have, like, a couple of stuff, like, just old remnants off my account available. I have like two old backgrounds, stuff like that. So yeah. Next topic is incursion. Okay, incursion. Thing with incursion is that, well, it's incursion. I planned the series to be a five part thing. I wanted it to be a voiceover but I wasn't sure that any of the voice actors would do justice. So what I did is I went and made a subtitle series. It was very successful for a very long time. I managed to get, I think it was like three parts out, and then I got to, far, I, I got, I got to um, part four. And I just, I lost enthusiasm in the project entirely because I did not want to shoot a scene that was very, very personal to me. I'm going to leave it at that. 
um, background to It's My Life, I was not satisfied with 2.08. And right now it's sitting in Vegas. It's like, a bunch of it is edited. It's going to include a couple of real life clips that were taken a very, very, very long time ago. Uh, most recent being like 09. December of 09. Um, there's only like four real life clips. They're part of a dream sequence. But, um, I'm not sure if I want to edit this one. I'm not sure if I want to put it out. I put my entire series as enlisted because I was just sick of people asking me questions. I, I like, I, I don't know, I just, I lost the steam in this series. I promised someone very close to me that I would continue it and see it through to its end. I'm not sure if this is the end of the series or not. Um, I don't think so, to be honest with you. Uh, this, this episode ends on a bit of a bad foot. Like, I didn't want to end it at that scene, but my game crashed and it wouldn't start up again. I wasn't ready to deal with it. I chucked it on the other drive. Um, I still have all the clips, obviously. And I'm just, I'm not sure where I want to go with it. I'm not sure if I want to edit this episode, to be honest with you. I'm very proud of how far I've come. I'm very proud of all the voice actors that contributed to the two voiced episodes. I'm very proud of everyone who has given me their trust to continue this story. And I'm very proud of Alex, who has helped me continue this story. Um, she has helped me through this for since we met, obviously which is over five years ago. It's like six years or something? Six and a half? It's, it's been a very long time. And she's helped me. It's been nice. I'm not sure if I want to do a season three. It would get recent. Very recent. It would deal with Jane. It would deal with a bunch of things that I haven't mentioned because I didn't want to mention them. Um, it would deal with Mark. A lot of you don't know who Mark is. Mark is Sims for the win. Mark has dyslexia. Mark uses a reader to read text. Mark is gay. Mark has a boyfriend. Mark. He lived in Anaheim. Uh, he left his school because he finished all of his courses and he left. He didn't get a graduation ceremony or anything. He left his school and he moved to Toronto. He is going to a university in Toronto. I'm not sure which one yet. We've spoken, but he is going to be taking a while. Um, it would deal with, well, I'm not going to name him. Um, a few of you know his name, but he looks identical to Monroe Chambers. Like, I've seen pictures side by side, it looks identical. Um, I, like, <laughs> that's the part I don't want to deal with, is this guy. Um, he's leaving in three days for a town two, uh, two hours away, and I can't handle it. I can't. I can't handle dealing with it. And trying to tell a story of somebody that I'm never going to see again. And I think that hits me harder than Kirsten did. I think it hits me harder than anything else did. Um, because he's moving away. We'll still talk, it's just we'll never see each other again. Next topic is tristesse. Tristesse means melancholy or Misery in French. Um, it is also a song by Chopin. I can speak French, by the way, just so you know. I can read it, I can write it, I can speak it, I can breathe it. Um, tristesse means melancholy, misery, sadness. It's basically, it's it means depression. 
but like in a different, more medieval form. And Tree's Test is going to be like, if you've ever watched Skins UK, I don't recommend you watch the US version, because it sucks. I'm just going to put it that. Oh, and Skins Season 5, I don't, I, I, I've tried to watch it. I got to like episode 2, I didn't like it. I've watched seasons 1 through 4. I just re-finished season 4 last night. Um, I recommend you go watch his seasons 1 and 2. That, like, my favorite season is probably season 2. Um, Precess is going to be like Skins. It's going to be very controversial. It's not going to be a voiceover. It's going to be subtitled. I'm not sure where I'm going with this. I'm collaborating with Mark. And I'm collaborating with Alex on it. Uh, Alex does not personally know Mark. So this is going to be a bit tough, but Mark is going to be either filming or editing it. I'm pretty sure I'm going to be the editor for this one. Because he, again, he uses a reader. A lot of you have been commenting, and this is why I get very defensive of him. A lot of you have been commenting on how he has crap spelling, crap grammar. He talks like he's five. Please leave him alone. He has dyslexia. He was flipped over a car in a parking lot. And he suffered a lot of damage to his brain. That was already damaged. He has dyslexia and on top of that, he's having a very hard time breathing. He's having a very hard time with his blood pressure, he's having a very time, like, it's, it's not a good situation, and now he's moved to university, um, he's in the same country as me now, but, yeah, I get very defensive of him, because he's, like, the only thing I have left in relation to Jane. And Tristesse is supposed to be, like, more of Mark's side of life. And it's supposed to be more of, like, Skins. Like, it's, it's supposed to be, like, Skins, and it's supposed to be, like, Mark's life a little bit. Like, he's taking real-life experiences with it. He's going to be writing it. I'm going to be scripting it. Writing and scripting are two different things. Writing is where you write it out like a story. Scripting is where you script it like lines when you're editing. So, yeah, and Alex will be choosing the music for this. I have episode one has been sent to me. Um, I have edited part of it. I'm not sure when I'm going to touch this project next. We were going to do another series called River Blossom now, which leads to my other topic. Old series. Um, I'm sorry this is being so long, but I just I have to get this out. We had an old series called River Blossom now. Um, River Blossom Now was basically the tale of two weeks before the story of River Blossom Hills. And it just, it goes into depth of all the characters. It kind of details them a bit more than, like, Maxis did. If you don't know who Maxis is, Maxis made The Sims 2. EA was the publisher. It was not the other way around. EA made The Sims 3, EA published it. That is why Sims 3 is so different from Sims 2, and that's why I prefer Sims 2, because I like Maxis. Maxis makes great games. And I felt, at the time, when I was just playing through River Blossom Hills, that there, were, there was much more of a story, and it's one of those stories where there's so much that isn't said in the little blips that they give you. So we just kind of made it up as we went along. And the reason that we didn't put this out is because Mark got flipped over that car. And I'm not sure if we're going to continue it because the game, it doesn't crash. It's just, there would only be like two episodes or three episodes. I have everything, like all the clips. I just don't know where I'm, where I'm going to go with this project. I don't even know if it's cancelled or what. Mark says it's cancelled. I say it's not. Um, there were a few old series that I had. The Nobodies was... It's... Like, Tree's Tess is going to be like the Nobodies a bit. I had the Nobodies film. I had the Nobodies edited. The game died. I decided not to continue it. 
Um, the Nobody's was going to be, like, my replacer for It's My Life, because I got scared. The game started to crash, and I decided to abandon it. And for those of you who don't know about the series, go back in my videos, or, um, my friend had a series, and it was, like, summer of 2010. My friend had a series of a bit huge controversy, and then I came up with this. So, yeah, this, like, the Nobody's was supposed to be basically a huge controversy settler. It was supposed to bring a new idea to the community. It was supposed to be kind of like a replacer for It's My Life at the same time. Tree's Test is going to be like the Nobody's, but it's not going to be a replacer for It's My Life. Um, these kids we used to meet. <laughs> I have one part left to the story. I'm going to merge parts three and four. A lot of you don't know about the series either. Um, the thing is, is that these kids we used to be is a story that I don't think went anywhere. It was just a bunch of it was just about a bunch of people, and in the end, something bad happens. And that's it. I don't know what to do with that story. It's I wouldn't call it cancelled. I hate canceling things. I would just say that I'm just I'm letting it be until I finally get that epiphany. I almost had it a couple months ago. I have most of it filmed. It's just it's in my it's it's was in my it's my life game. I don't know if I'm going to continue it. I don't know if I'm gonna scrap it. I don't know what. Harnessing casualties. I've discussed this before. Not a lot of people watch that video. <laughs> I'm going to be short and sweet. Went on Sims Urbania, downloaded a bunch of stuff for my New Orleans. Uh, it severely, severely screwed over my game. So I found that it was a restaurant from there. Um, and it had some reflective flooring that wasn't showing up, and it screwed with my integrated chipset that I had at the time, and it crashed my game, so I deleted that game. Call us strange. Um, that's definitely cancelled. It was supposed to be the Strange Town story. I, if you haven't really, if you don't really know me, I'm kind of obsessed with the Maxis stories already. My favorite renditions of the Maxis story are, well, there's a picture story, it's by Skellington7D on, I think it's Live Journal. She does a thing called Fortune and Romance. It is insanely popular and is very, very well done. She is not totally canon, which means like she doesn't go totally with what Maxis gave her, but she does fill in a lot, and she does make it interesting. She does a lot of Sims 1 related stuff too. So if you've ever played The Sims 1 or you're interested in it, please go read that. The other rendition that I really loved that inspired Call of Strange, like I didn't know about Fortune and the Romance, but it gave me ideas while I was filming it, but I never put any episodes out after episode one. Um, Fortune and Romance, and then the other one was Rock Creek High by Money66. It's my second favorite series of all time. I've seen in events a lot of the scripts. It is very well done. It actually, it's inspired the hundreds. It's inspired the season two of It's My Life. It's inspired everything in the way that it is directed, in the way that it is scripted, in the way that it is like done like I don't mean scripted as in like I scripted everything in it's my life if that's the kind of impression you're getting right now I meant like in the way it's scripted as in like she knows how people talk and when I don't have places like I like I don't always fill in like the blanks or anything that's why the series gets really confusing but like if you just fill it with small talk like she did it works you know, like small talk happens every day, and people usually leave this out of their script and go straight down the rail tracks to the plot. I don't like doing that. I really, I don't. Call of Strange was inspired by Rock Creek High. Later on, by Fortune and Romance, I had put up some episodes personally and showed a few people. Uh, they said it was going nowhere, so I just I quit it. Saferville. Uh, <laughs> I had episode one filmed, I ran out of ideas, I quit it. Hello, I love you, um, the game started crashing, I ran out of ideas. It was actually, it was a pretty good series at the time. I quit it. Cobblestone Valley Academy was the one 
fully surviving series that I did off my Monster J 2004 account. It was on My Life My Productions. I actually, if I find the game, the back of, of the game, I'm not opposed to continuing it. Alex wrote a lot of the episodes when we were like really, really young. So it does, it is a bit stupid, but it's just, it's kind of a release to do an OCC series. Summer's End was supposed to be my first series on Snapshot of Soul, but I decided after a prompter from Alex to do it, it's my life instead. Summer's End was supposed to be, <laughs> well, Summer's End inspired the Nobodies, the Nobodies was inspired by Skins, and Summer's End, it's like a big huge circle, trees Tess, Nobodies, Skins, Summer's End. Skins was not my series, Skins UK is a TV show. Um, it is very graphic, but it is very good. Where I'm going now with everything is that the hundreds is like, it's a passion of mine. It's something I want to do. It's something that I kind of, I need to do. And um, it's very good to just chalk all of my ideas together. But at the same time, it's harming Tris Tess. Sorry. Um, I don't know if I'm going to go through with Trees Test if I could tell you the hundreds. I'm very thankful for all your feedback. Um, I have got episode one certified to air on a local TV station. This does not mean that you can just turn on, say, like Global or CTV or CBC or anything and see it. It means it's going to be on like a local. Like, not PBS. Smaller than that. Like, only 30 people watch it at any given time. But it would be good exposure for me. I did this before, it worked, but they had too many deadlines. So it's only going to be episodes 1 and 2 for now. Um, for people who live in my area, you have to be a Shaw subscriber to see it. Not a lot of people are anymore because they're very expensive, but I, I'm not even a Shaw subscriber, but if you are, you can see it. Um, for It's My Life, again, I described that. I would like to alert you guys of a movement. It's called the No CC Movement. I might discuss this in a later video. Um, it was started started by um, Shorts123. I know of a few people who are interested in joining it. I know of a few people who already have joined it. He didn't intentionally start this movement, but you know what? It's a good idea. It's where you make movies and you either you do or you don't use talk hacks. You do or you don't use pose boxes. Usually you don't. And um, you go and you make movies with just what Maxis gave you. No customized, no custom hair, no custom nothing. And you may say that sims look ugly, but quite honestly I have had some of my most beautiful sims have no custom content. That is the wrap up of my vlog which is ooh, 40 minutes long. Sorry about that. I hope you had fun listening to my first very long rant. I hope the others won't be this long, but I just need to get this out. Okay? Bye.